Hey guys and welcome back to Couton Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how to whip up these neat little knit mini hats for Christmas. Now these little ornaments are great as an ornament to hang on your tree. You can add them to the front of packages, give them as gifts. They're super quick to whip up. Uh, you can They're made out of bulky yarn so they're only 16 stitches around. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is what the finished ornaments look like. I have chosen red and white here. Uh, it's kind of a I don't know, darkish red and an ivory color. I've added some wooden buttons to the front. There are pom-poms on the top. There's a nice little hanger there that you can hang this ornament from your tree with. Uh, but these are super quick to whip up. Like I said, they're only 16 stitches around. It is 20 rows, so they don't take long at all. Now, set those off to the side. This is the yarn that I am using. It is Premier Yarns Serenity Chunky. I got this from Joann's. Uh, you can find them um, on sale all the time. Use a coupon for them, whatever. Uh, this color here is, where's the color? Color is pristine. The ivory color, the red is red ochre. Uh, you don't have to use these colors. This is just, they were on sale, so I bought them. Um, these are both a bulky weight yarn, uh, weight of five, whatever that means. Recommends a size 11 needle, which is exactly the needle that I'm going to be using for this. Uh, speaking of needles, these are just some cheapo bamboo 16 inch circular needle. Uh, you could just as easily do this on double pointed needles. That's perfectly fine. I'm not real comfortable using double pointed needles, so I am going with the circular and doing the magic loop method. So what you want to do is get your yarn here and you want to cast on 16 stitches. There's three, four, and I'm doing the long tail cast on. You can do whatever kind of cast on that is comfortable for you. Uh, and I'm going to be doing this particular hat backwards. I'm going to do a red cuff and a white body. Uh, this is red body, white brim. This is going to be a red brim, white body. So I'm just going to keep on going until I get 16 stitches on here. All right, so I've got my 16 stitches on here. I had to take a break because the uh, sirens went off for their monthly test. Uh, 16 stitches in here, and now I'm going to do, separate these stitches into two groups. Uh, I'm gonna separate and then, I cannot, really cannot talk today. Separate them into a group of eight and eight. Now, since we're doing a magic loop, I'm gonna take these first eight stitches and move them onto my needle. And my second set is over here. Now I am taking for granted that you guys know the basic gist of knitting. Uh, this pattern is a beginning pattern, however, I'm not going to show you how to knit in this video, so I'm just going to assume that you know how to knit. So I'm not going to explain everything. Um, but I've got my magic loop set up here. I'm ready to join in the round. Got st eight stitches on this side, eight on this side. So I'm going to connect this with a knit one. We are now joined in the round. And what I'm going to do is knit these first eight stitches. And there's really no counting to be done here except for rows, because uh, you're just going to go around and around and around. There's the first eight stitches. Pull your needle through that. Reach over here. Get these stitches back onto your other needle. and continue knitting. Now, I don't know if I said this before or not. Um, you can use double pointed needles for this. That, that is perfectly fine. Uh, let's see what is going on here. Two, four, six. These stitches are over each other. All right, there we go. And the sirens are going off again. I'll be back in a moment. All right, so now that the sirens are off, hopefully for good, come back to you. 
Uh, all I'm doing is knitting in the round here. Um, just going through and working this the magic loop method way. Doing the first half of the stitches, pulling my needle through to the second half of the stitches, moving them to the point, grabbing my yarn, and finishing up, and just working in the round here. And what you want to do is do this for 10 rounds. You're just going to keep knitting around and around and around. The nice thing about this pattern is that there is no purling to be done. It is all knit stitches. So this is what we're going to continue doing. And I don't know if I said in the beginning of the video, I've gotten distracted so many times here. Um, but I'm using size 11 uh, circular needles. This is a 16 inch set. Doesn't matter what length you use because you're doing magic loop. Um, but this works just as easily on double pointed needles. So, and if you don't want to do this in a chunky weight or you have a extra, extra bulky, use the size needles that you need for your yarn. Obviously, if you're going to do this in a worsted weight yarn, these ornaments are going to be super tiny. Uh, if you do them in an ultra chunky or chenille yarn, they're going to be quite a bit bigger. So, uh, but there's really no gauge for this, you know, just use whatever you normally do. I am knitting this really tight for some reason. That's okay. Um, and you don't have to do this in just red and white. You can do them in green and white or blue and white or pink and purple or lime green and fuchsia, whatever color you want. So I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until I have done 10 rows and then I will be back with you. Oh my God, I've done this so tight. Those uh, tornado signs really threw me off. Anyway, enough blabbering. I'm going to do my 10 rounds and then I will be back. So this is the beginning of my 10th round here. And I'm just going to knit around. These are my first eight stitches. Pull these through. Pull these through. I'll get them onto my hook anyway. Finish up this round. And then I'm going to join my second color. Nine. And to join the second color, I'm going to double use both yarns and pull it through the last hoop or last loop on my needle. So I've got these, wrap that around and this, get that on and there we go. These are our first 10 stitches which is the ribbing or the cuff of our hat, the brim I guess you would call it. Um, I'm going to cut this red yarn because we are done with that. Sorry about bumping the camera there. Now, for the hat, since I'm not doing a ribbing around the cuff, um, this is the way it looks when the brim is unfolded. You've got the pearl side here, the right side of the hat there, so when you fold this up, it looks like kind of a mock ribbing, if you will, but it's not. It's just plain pearl. Uh, my, the original one that I did had a pearl, or not a pearl, a ribbed brim hat thing, but the way ribbing is, it just stretches out and it just kind of looks, mm, it's not the way I want my hat to look. If you want to do um, a one by one rib, by all means go ahead, or you can do a two by two, whatever kind of ribbing that you want. I just like the way that this looks better. Um, and it's just an ornament on a tree, so it's not, you know, it's no big deal. So it's just knit 
and it makes a nicer looking cuff in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do to achieve that look, so when I fold this up, you have the right side out, I'm gonna turn this inside out and I'm gonna start knitting backwards instead of purling, because again, this is just a, an ornament. It's not something that you're gonna wear unless you know you have a doll or something that you wanna put it on, but all I'm gonna do is start knitting on the wrong side going around. So I've got that one, this stitch where I joined. I'm gonna put my loop in there. Maybe. Okay, let's get this going. All right, there, it's joined. Now I'm just going to knit around Again, just like I did with the red part, the cuff or the brim of the hat, I'm just gonna knit this around. And this yarn really is has a tendency to split. Now this will leave a hole where you joined those two yarns together. It doesn't matter, it's gonna be up inside. The cuff is gonna, um, cover that, so, oh boy. Apparently I'm very tense today because these are knit very, very tightly. Get this back. I'm gonna try and loosen this up a little bit as I knit this first round. And this is naturally tight anyway because you're working on the wrong side of the fabric and you're going through the wrong loop, wrong side of the loops. This is not natural, intuitive way to, to knit, but this is only an ornament. Uh, if you want to go and, you know, purl the entire top, by all means, go ahead. Purling is not my favorite thing to do, so. This is how I created this ornament because it's easier just doing it the easiest way possible. This is supposed to be enjoyable. It's not supposed to be stressful. All right, get this situated. There's one row and I'm gonna continue doing this for 11 or 12 more rows. It doesn't have to be perfect um, or an exact number. We're just kind of doing it until it looks good. So I'm gonna move this around. It was so much easier when you knit loosely. And there's a lot of threads here hanging off. Just kind of manage them as best you can. And I'm just gonna keep knitting around until I've done 11 or 12 rows or so. All right, so I think I've got 11 rows on here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I'm gonna put one more row on here. And get this situated. Sorry for the clanking of the needles against the countertop here. I'm gonna get one more row on here. Now that I've worked on my tension here, it goes a lot smoother. I don't know why I was knitting so tight before, but tension really doesn't matter on this ornament because like I said, it's several times now, I'm sure. I don't remember what I say and what I don't. Um, it's just an ornament, so it does not have to be perfect at all. Two, three. I'm not sure why I'm counting because you don't have to count these. You're just knitting in a row. All right, this is 12 rows. Now, this is gonna be enough for me. I'm pretty sure if you want to figure out if it is enough or not for you, go ahead and fold up the brim 
or as high as you want it. Pull your needles together and that is what it will look like, which is perfect enough for me. So what I'm going to do is cut my yarn here. I'm going to leave myself about 12 inches for a tail. Get that out of the way. And now what you're going to do is not bind this off, but you want to pull the tail through each stitch on here. So what you're going to do is you're going to knit every stitch, which you need to end to knit, Knit your stitch, slip that stitch off of your needle, and just pull the end of the yarn through. Knit the stitch like usual, pull the end through. And you're going to do this all the way around. This takes a couple minutes, so I'm not going to sit here and make you watch every stitch. You could also thread your needle if you wanted to or thread a tapestry needle and just sew through every stitch. That would be perfectly fine. In fact, I might do that for the second half of stitches here. I just thought of that because that would certainly go faster than knitting and pulling off each of these stitches. Don't split your stitches when you're doing this. All right, there is half of one needle. I'm going to try that. Let me get a tapestry needle. Let's try it this way and see if this goes any faster. Get all my stitches up on my needle. Hey, would you look at that? That goes a little bit quicker. Am I going through those stitches the right way? Yes. All right, so load a tapestry needle with the end of your yarn and do it this way. This is much quicker because you're going to have to thread up the end of this yarn with a tapestry needle anyway. All right, knitting needles are done. So get those out of the way. Now what you want to do is pull this tight. Don't go overboard with this because you do not want to break your yarn. That's the last thing you want to do. Get that situated in there. You want to sew this through a couple of stitches. And it really helps to use a blunt tipped tapestry needle for this. That way you won't split your yarn and it'll be easier to pull through. Um, got that. Now I'm going to put my needle through the center right there, pull it out the bottom, and I'm just going to weave this end in. Now this does not have to be super secure. Again, it is just an ornament. So it's not going to be handled a lot. Let's see if we can pull this through. It's not going to cooperate. Remember how I said a blunt tipped needle? Yeah, this is not blunt enough. All right. Just weave it through a couple stitches and I'm gonna leave kind of a longish tail on this, maybe an inch or so. Just snip that off. Turn this right side out and you wanna weave in the other of your ends as well. Now you can see right there is the hole that that join left, just pull these two ends and it'll kind of close that up. You want to weave those ends in as well as the end on your starting end, the remainder of your cast on. Fold up your brim and there is the finished, well, the knitting portion finished. So I'm going to go ahead and weave in these ends. You don't need to watch me do that. Uh, and I will be right back. All right, so knitting part is done. Now, what would a cap or a knitted cap be without a pom-pom on top? So for the pom-pom, since this has a red brim, I'm gonna put a red uh, pom-pom on it. 
all we're going to do for the pom-pom, this is super simple. Uh, depending on how wide your fingers are, I think I'm going to do two fingers wide here. I'm just going to wrap this yarn. Uh, I found 35 wraps to be perfect, so I should probably count this. Uh, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tie this in a knot. It's hard to do one-handed. Get that tied to begin with. Make sure it is in the center so your pom-pom things are even. Go ahead and pull this tight, not so tight that it breaks, but tight enough. And then you want to double knot this. And now what I'm gonna do is use my big scissors and I'm gonna go through and snip all of these loops. If you want to use a pom-pom maker to make your pom-pom, by all means go right ahead. I don't have one, so I'm not going to use it, obviously. You make sure that all of these are snipped. Make sure that they are all cut. Now you want to even this out, get everything away that could possibly pick this hair up because this is going to be messy. You want to trim up your pom-pom, make it nice and even. You want to do this before you get it on your ornament because this will stick to everything and make your nice white yarn a pink yarn. Not exactly the look we're going for. Kind of brush this out. Trim this up as nice as you want it. This yarn does not trim up very well because it's it just unravels the more you cut it. Um, but we'll work with it because it's what we have. Okay, we've got our um, thing here. You're going to use a crochet hook, or if you want a tapestry needle, it doesn't really matter. Um, whatever you want, because what you're going to do is take these two ends and pull them through. The top of your hat. Now, do not pull them in through the same hole because then when you go to tie it, it will just pull through. So I'm going to split these on either side of where I join this in the middle. One on either side of that hole. Can you see that? How it's offset. You to turn this inside out. You want to tie this into a firm knot. I'm going to leave these a little longer because I don't want that to come undone. Get this out like this. And now we're going to need a hanger for the top. So for the hanger, I'm using a just one of the uh, ends that I wove through, I it came out a little long. So what you're going to want to do is get this onto a tapestry needle. You could use a crochet hook, but I'm not sure that that's not going to pull through. I'm not confident in how secure that pom-pom is, so I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to we or thread my tapestry needle here, maybe. This might take me a minute, or it might not. Just get it on there, and you want to look in here and find where the yarn is that you tied your pom-pom together with. I don't know how well you can see it. It is right in there. Put your needle underneath that and pull through. Take your needle off. Tie this as long or as short as you want your hanger to be. I don't want this really long, so that looks about good. Make sure that's nice and tight. 
cut your hand short. Pull this through so it looks like that. Now you could leave your little hat just like that. However, I like it a little better with a little button on it. I asked you guys on Instagram if you liked the button or if you didn't. A lot of people said that they liked it, so we're gonna add a button. So for the buttons, I just got these little wooden Christmas tree buttons. Again, I bought these at Joanne's same time I bought the yarn. Uh, all I'm going to do, I think I want white for this. I'm gonna take my yarn and split the plies using a smaller crochet hook. I'm gonna pull this through the buttons. Now the only reason I'm using yarn to tie these buttons on is because I did not want to spend $4 on a spool of thread that will match the color of these buttons that I will never use again. So, just pull the yarn through with a small steel hook. Figure out where you want this. I like it on the brim, so that's where I'm going to put it. I'm just going to put my crochet hook through there. Get this one in. Do the same with the second side. I'm going to turn this out. Again, just tie this in a knot to secure it. it does not have to be anything fancy. I just want to make sure that it's on there. Nip your threads, and there is your finished hat ornament. Looks nice and neat on the bottom, nice on the front, nice on the back. This pom pom needs to be trimmed a little more. You got yourself a nice little hanger right there, and there you go. There is your finished knitted hat ornament. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for sticking around for, if you made it this far, for my first ever knitting tutorial. If you like more knit stuff, go ahead and let me know. I've got plenty of more knitting projects ahead. Uh, this past year, I've been knitting more than crocheting. In fact, I haven't crocheted really a whole lot of anything. Uh, it's all been knitting because I've been enjoying knitting a lot. So without further ado, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe. I was gonna say for more deliciousness again. Wrong channel. All right, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want. We'll see you next time.